My name is Kevin Jocelyn, and in this video, I'll be discussing using FlexWell to model CO2 phase behavior within the well bore. In this video, we're going to cover CO2 phase behavior. We'll talk about how to generate CO2 PVT for stars using WinProp. We'll take a look at how to set up FlexWell in stars, in particular uh, for CO2. And then we'll look at the results output uh, from a sample file using FlexWell to model CO2 phase behavior. So first, let's start by discussing the CO2 phase behavior. Within the well bore, uh, CO2 is typically uh, going to be a liquid at surface conditions, meaning it has a low temperature and a high pressure. Due to the pressure and temperature changes along the well bore, the downhole conditions can sometimes be significantly different than the top hole conditions, and this can lead to a potential phase change. On the screen here, we have a pressure temperature diagram for pure CO2. So pressure is on the y-axis and temperature is on the x-axis. The solid line represents uh, the saturation line. To the left of the saturation line, we would be in the liquid region, and to the right of the saturation line, we would be in the gas region. Um, the red dot represents the supercritical point, and when, if we're above the supercritical point, then we are in the supercritical region. The dashed line represents an extension of the saturation line, where to the left of the dashed line, we would be liquid-like supercritical fluid, and to the right, we would be gas-like supercritical fluid. The green dot represents, say, a typical uh, tubing head pressure or wellhead conditions where we're near the saturation point, so we're at a uh, pressure higher than the saturation pressure, but a relatively low temperature. In instances of aquifers, typically the fluid or the CO2 will remain within the liquid phase uh, as we go from the tubing head down to the bottom of the pressure. If the pressure gets high enough, we might enter the supercritical region, but it's still considered a liquid-like supercritical fluid. Injecting into depleted gas reservoirs presents a different challenge where we might cross over the pseudo-saturation line and into the gas-like supercritical fluid. Depending on the time of the injection and at later points in time of a depleted gas reservoir, we might actually directly cross the saturation line as we transition from a liquid into a gas. Next, I'm going to show how to generate the PVT from WinProp for stars of a pure CO2 system. Here we have a, a sample WinProp model, and in this WinProp model, I've added in two components, CO2 and H2O. Scrolling to the right here in the property window, uh, I can see that we've added in some properties for the solubility using Henry's law for both CO2 and H2O. If we want to calculate the solubility, we can right click um, from this menu here and select Calculate Aqueous Solubility. We then enter a reference pressure and temperature to specify the solubility. In the CMG STARS PBT uh, calculation form, the first thing that we want to select is going to be K-value tables to generate uh, K-value tables for CO2. I will also choose the option Gas Liquid and Liquid Liquid K-value tables. We need two types of K-value tables. Gas liquid will describe the uh, saturation of CO2, which could potentially condense into a liquid phase. In the simulator, we would represent that liquid phase with an oil. We also need to generate liquid-liquid k-values uh, because the CO2 can potentially dissolve in the water phase as well. In the k-values tab allows me to enter a few more options. We can provide the pressure and temperature ranges. And I also need to check this option at the bottom called Used Simplified Algorithm for K-Values. And this is the recommended approach for pure systems uh, of pure CO2, H2S, methane, or nitrogen, which could potentially appear in three phases, the gas, the liquid or oil phase, and the aqueous phase or water phase. This is a relatively new option within WinProp and was, came out in the 2023 release. Once we're ready, we can export this from WinProp and then import it into our data set. I've already done that. So this, uh, what we're looking at here is a data set that contains a STARS PBT for CO2. A couple of things I want to point out here uh, that might be different from a typical STARS PBT. We're using the PBT departure on option, which is the Lee Kessler enthalpy departure. For, uh, that will allow us to make enthalpy a function of pressure. This is important for modeling the enthalpy of CO2 in the supercritical region, as well as for capturing um, pressure-dependent enthalpy effects like the Joule-Thompson effect. We've also defined the uh, enthalpy 
uh, or heat capacity uh, coefficients, which will be used in the enthalpy calculations for CO2, and this is directly coming from wind power. We also have two k-value tables for CO2. We have the gas liquid k-value table. It's condensed here in C-Edit. And then we have the liquid liquid table. The next thing I want to show is setting up flex well for CO2 injection, and in particular, demonstrating a few features within Flexwell. So let's return back to the data set, and I'm gonna to go to the wells and recurrent section. And in the wells and recurrent section, I've actually already gone ahead and added in uh, a flex well. And the flex well or attaching a well to a flex well is similar to any other flex well operation. But a couple of things that we might want to change here in the case of CO2. Uh, the first is the segregation option, which is set to on. And I'm actually going to replace that with no slip. The reason for doing that is that our well bore is being modeled to surface and is a vertical well. And if we have multi-phase flow in a vertical well, for numerical stability, it's recommended to use the no slip option. We won't lose any calculation accuracy as long as our velocity is sufficiently high. At the bottom of the flexible definition, I also have a keyword called FLX initial, which allows me to initialize the flex well at particular conditions. And the recommended approach here is we want to initialize our well bore with conditions close to what we're going to be injecting at. So I'm initializing here with 100% oil saturation because I'm expecting to see uh, initially a column of liquid CO2 inside the well bore. I specify 100% CO2 as the mole fraction. And I initialize with a pressure that's equal to the, that's going to be based on a gravity column of CO2 with inside the well bore. The initial, and, and this pressure will be associated with the toe of the well. The initial temperature is set to be five degrees Celsius, since that's going to be my injection temperature. Just going to scroll up here to our injection conditions. And within the in injection conditions, it's recommended that we use the mixture Z option when it comes for injecting CO2. This option is recommended whenever we're injecting things in stars other than uh, pure water or steam. This allows us to have better control on the input composition as well as the input enthalpy. Specify our mole fractions, in which the case I've specified pure CO2. And next, we can enter in a value for the enthalpy. And sometimes we don't know what the enthalpy is, so I initially enter a value of zero. I'll then run the model in check-only mode. And when I run the model in check-only mode, it'll print uh, actually an enthalpy table. So let's take a look at the out file of what that looks like. So this is a sample out file of uh, a model that had an enthalpy of zero. We just run it for one time step in check only mode. And we scroll down to this table here. And in this table, we have a column for temperature, a column for mixture enthalpy, and then a column for gas mole fraction. So when the gas mole fraction is one, that means we're in the gas phase. When it's zero, it means we're in liquid CO2. And if it's somewhere in between, then that means we have uh, two phases. So I want to inject at five degrees Celsius, which is here in the table. And then this is the corresponding enthalpy value. Of course, this is related to the pressure that we specifies, which would be 4,500 kPa. So I'll select the uh, mixture enthalpy, which is negative uh, 17,955. And I'll go back to the original data file where it had an enthalpy value of zero. And I'm going to replace that with negative 17, 995. But this was the last change that we needed to make, and we can now go and run this model. I want to take a look at what uh, the output will look like for a Flexwell model, where we're modeling the CO2 phase behavior. Within results, I can create profile plots, and profile plots allow me to plot properties versus distance. And if I choose Flexwell as my path type, it'll allow me to plot properties inside the Flexwell. Going to dashboards, once we created a plot, I can actually choose different times now to look at the, the profile plot. In this profile plot, I have distance along the x-axis, and then I have uh, saturation on the y1 axis, and then I also have pressure and temperature. The green line represents oil saturation, or um, in this case, which would be liquid CO2, which you can see is initially at 100% inside the well bore. The red would represent gas saturation, which is initially 0%. The black line represents the pressure profile, which we can see goes from 4,500 uh, up to 25,000 kPa. 
and the pink line represents temperature. We specified initial temperature at the toe of five degrees, and then through thermodynamic equilibrium, we see a slight temperature change um, up to the surface. If I choose a point later in time, maybe 10 or 20 years into our injection scheme, we can actually see um, a difference in particularly in the saturation profile. So here we can see we initially have uh, oil saturation um, at the top of the wellbore, and then we have gas saturation uh, actually at the bottom of the wellbore. So we can actually see a phase change from the liquid CO2 into the gas CO2. And depending on what time we select um, during our injection process, we might see a different difference in the phase behavior. So I'll just uh, select a different time here. And we can see at this time, um, actually we have a much lower pressure. So this is an example um, for a depleted gas reservoir. And we can see near the top of the reservoir, we actually have both phases present. So um, oil and gas, because that's because we're right at the saturation point. This is where we're crossing over. And then once we cross over the saturation line, then it's all gas. And this is opposed to the early dirt times when we're 100% liquid saturation. And so how the phase CO2 uh, phase behavior changes in the wellbore will be really important for making sure we're capturing the correct downhole conditions. Thank you very much for watching this Tech Byte video. And uh, I hope to see you guys soon in future Tech Byte videos.